Okay guys, in this video, I'm specifically gonna talk about the process of how we are pre-processed or pre-sanctified before we ever actually come to faith. This is a follow-up to the previous videos um, in line on my channel. So this is almost like a part three, if you will, to the calling election, selection, so on. I'm um, just gonna get right into it. it. Won't be very long, but it is it is good to know. It's awesome. It, it, it totally explains how if you've ever been, and I can speak to this very much, even if you've been in a life of sin, and uh, it just seems as though magically everything worked out just perfectly so that you could actually follow him and get into the life he has for you. Um, it's very much intentional and it was, it, was, it, was, it was foreordained. It was absolutely made possible before eternity um, even, even, even was enacted. I mean, time, men on earth, angels and so on. He knew about this before he ever hit the button, spoke everything into existence. So let's get into it. So as we have seen in the past, covered in those videos I just I just released, sanctification in the plan of God is a threefold process wherein a person is set apart to God, removed from the realm of the profane, and entered into the realm of the holy, from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. That is a paraphrase of Colossians 1.13, by the way. The first phase, salvation, enters the new believer into union with Christ. We become one with him holy, sanctified saints by our way of, of our position in Jesus Christ. Uh, you see that in Romans 1.7, uh, Romans 16.2, 1 Corinthians 1.2, also 1.30, and 6.11, and Ephesians 3.18. Uh, after salvation, the process of sanctification, see my videos on sanctification, um, continues as we draw ever closer to God and farther away from the world through our adheren ad adherence to the truth of the word, becoming more like our Savior in terms of our behavior as we as we mature spiritually. And you see that in Romans 6, 19 through 22, Ephesians 4, 12, uh, also 5, 3, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 7, Hebrews 10, 14, and also 12, 14. The final phase of sanctification will occur for us at the resurrection when in perfect eternal bodies we shall be perfect and perfectly sanctified in every way forevermore. John 17, 19, Acts 20, 32, 1 Corinthians 6, 2, that's Ephesians 1, 18 also, Colossians 1, 12, 1 Thessalonians 3, 13, uh, and also 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, 10, I'm sorry, 2, 1, and Revelation 11, 18. There's a whole bunch of verses there. While holiness and sanctification usually relate to believers, Scripture also notes an aspect of God's plan wherein all who are destined to believe through his anticipation of our future choices, his full knowing, uh, are kept safe for that future choice. Here's 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 14. And we ought to always give thanks to God for you, brethren beloved by the Lord, because God chose you from the beginning for salvation by the sanctification of the Spirit and by faith in the truth. I have things to say about this personally. I'll wait till the end. 1 Peter 1, 1 and 2. I went over this last verse or last video, but this is such an awesome, awesome set of verses. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who, though outcasts dispersed through Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, were yet selected in the foreknowledge of God the Father by means of the Holy Spirit's consecration. In other words, it's, it's sanctification. He set us apart even before we chose. For the obedience in and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. This last passage in particular clearly links the foreknowledge of God with the sanctification of the Spirit. Although looking forward to time to the time of the believer's actual phase one sanctification at salvation where he chooses Christ. Oh, the intent of both apostles is to connect that that destined sanctification to God's decree and also to indicate that while not positionally holy until the point of faith in Christ, we believers do indeed find ourselves under the aegis, the protection, the control, or the, the, the situational control of the Holy Spirit and his protection until the moment of our salvation and sanctification. Paul expresses this same principle for all mankind in regard, in regard rather to the divine provision of the law whose ultimate purpose is evangelism. Galatians 3, 23 and 24. Before faith arrived, we were being guarded under the law's protection, shut in in anticipation of our faith, which was destined to be revealed. So the law acts as a guardian to, the, to us who leads us to Christ so that we might be justified by faith. This divine protection in anticipation of salvation and our official setting apart 
of sanctification that then takes place is certainly in line with what the process of being sanctified is all about. Sanctification is the process of becoming holy, truly holy, that is, as opposed to false, pharisaical, outward shows of self-righteousness. Sanctification in all three phases is a result of our accommodating our will to God's will by means of our responsiveness to His truth. That is how we become holy, and more like our Master day by day. We attain this holiness in principle, or positionally, when we believe. We attain it in practice as we adjust to His perfect standard of truth in our Christian walk. And then we attain it eternally when we arrive, carried through our faith intact until the end according to His will. Sanctification is the process of Christian life. Imitation of Christ is a goal. And the truth of the word is the means by which it is accomplished when the truth is believed initially at salvation, embraced and followed consistently after salvation, and confirmed eternally and bountifully rewarded based upon the quality of our response during this life. See my videos on, on sanctification and the, the furtherance of being holy, guys. Earning up these eternal rewards is what it's all about after faith. Not only do we honor and glorify him, but we help our brothers and sisters become closer to him as well. And, and I, I beg God that that's what this does. Because again, I, I don't care about the numbers. I care about whether or not what his will and, and his goal is for these things. If you're watching this and your goal is, is hope, I, I hope the same or better than mine, you want to know him. You want to know him now. You want to do his will now. And you want to do everything you can to make sure that those that want to know him around you have the same exact opportunities and abilities, or perhaps better. I want my kids to do better than me. Sorry. And while this process of spiritual trans and while this process of spiritual trans transformation, rather, God's plan for every believer writ large technically begins at the point when we put our faith in Christ, it is most comforting and encouraging to realize that God's plan for us bridges the gap between his eternal decree and our official entrance in, in his family. Even before we believed, we believed we were under his special protection of his spirit, so guiding us and shaping our lives that at the proper time we might believe. Now, I've had many scrapes with death. Specifically, I had some very particular scrapes with death before um, I, I was married the first time. Um, I had, I had, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get into too much because I don't want to, I don't want to slander or or talk poorly of of anybody that I've had dealings with. But back in my days when I made poor choices and I was around people that made poor choices, it was made very clear to me. I, I didn't know that this was the case at the time, but but I was experiencing this very specifically he kept I don't want to say too much he kept he kept certain diseases and certain circumstances that came from bad decisions made by myself and by others I was involved in from ever actually coming in contact with me if in fact those things would have actually been allowed to occur and and and, and actually happened to me I would not be able to be a father I would not be able to I would not be the healthy, I'm a relatively healthy, physically speaking, 40-year-old that I am today, or almost 40-year-old. And uh, I certainly, I don't think I would have been able to do any of these things that I do today. I am not alone in this. I know many of you can probably look back in your life and go, wow, I did a lot of, a lot of crap. How did I end up here? I just explained how. I didn't explain it. I just pointed out how the Bible explains how. We are literally made separate before we ever even make the choice to be separate. It is so amazing to know that the sanctification process, the being made holy, the being separated, set apart, so that we are literally set up to believe because he knew we would, and he knew perhaps those of us that are really charging after him would, like Paul. Paul, by all means, deserved to be blasted off the earth for his evil, but man, oh man, it just it didn't happen. He, he set us apart. I... I I wouldn't have had my first son, and although the whole situation blew up in my face, and uh, I lost my first wife, um, if it wasn't for his protecting of everybody involved, that whole situation never would have come about. I never would have been able to meet my current wife. I never would have been able to have the seven children we have. They're awesome people. I just There's so many things that he did, and it's going to make me cry if I think too hard about it, guys. But the truth is, is we are. We are looked out for eternally. What truly saddens me when I think about this is the seed on the rock. You know, if he went out of his way to make sure that those people ended up saved too, 
He did that knowing full well that they would leave him. How much love does he have for us, people? It's so mind-boggling. We need to keep these things close to our chest and truly maybe ask him to reveal a little bit of that to us so that we can have some understanding as to how he loves us. I don't think we're going to know until we see him and we have those new bodies just how much he protected us from the evils and disgusting things of this world. But he did. He absolutely did. He is the bulwark against all the evil and nonsense here. Anything that we do that we think is protecting ourselves really has nothing to do with that spirit. It is him. If anything ever is successful, it's him. If anything works out in our favor, even if it seemed wrong and stupid at the time, it's him. He is the only one that has made sure of these things. And I, I, can't, I can't put the point across hard enough, but I can't also deny that I haven't lived this and, and know this firsthand just how much he stopped the stupid evil that I would have brought upon myself or that others would have brought into my life by my interacting with them. So I'm thankful. I'm gracious. Uh, I'm gracious. That's not the right word. I am, I am aware of just how blessed on some level, not completely, obviously we're not there yet. Just how much he reaches out of eternity and takes care of us. And I hope you guys do know this too. The love, the actual love, the actual care, the actual the actual making making of us making us holy and separate from this place it is it is it is beyond magic anyway i'm not going to go on too much longer please be aware of your blessings if you don't know how much he looked out for you if 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 you don't know maybe maybe i don't know maybe ask for a little bit of revealing it's a wonderful thing you know i'm i'm not in a position right now where i'm very happy with what's going on but it all seems to be clearly a test but I can also look back and see that every single time something horrible came my way, that, that he took care of it. And if you guys would, would you please pray that I can keep this up? This is this is my dream. This truly is my dream. I wanted to be a pastor so bad. I just, I get the feeling now, looking back, he kept me from it. Because the whole, the whole pastorate, and I, with quotes, is perverted. And I, I could never have been a part of that, and I get it now. Anyway, guys, comment down below. Let me know what you think. This stuff is amazing. This is this is truly mind-boggling. It's all mind-boggling, but this is one where it's like, he even did it back when we were being stupid sinners. How much he loves us. Hit the bell, guys. Please share this. Please, please ponder this. This is big. He loves us so much. We'll talk to you soon.